on that note and without any further ado um, we're going to pivot on and we're going to look ahead to the big story of the week what everyone is sort of waiting to hear which is the the lion squad Gatlin's lion squad yeah um, he's going to it's it's kind of different this year in that they, I'm well I, I'm trying to remember usually I think they have the captain named before the squad yeah I think they've done that a few times but the captain is being named at the press conference and then the whole squad uh, is going to be announced as well probably in alphabetical uh, order usually oh they will yeah annoying, to disguise annoying. all the stuff yeah. they should name it just by position and get yes. everyone on board instantly but no they name them in alphabetical order so then you're scrambling your head going wait have they missed this guy yeah um, all of that stuff yeah <laughs> um, but uh, yeah Gatlin's going live 11.45 uh, this Tuesday to talk all things uh, Lions to name his squad and yeah I think all fans in the on these two islands of Ireland and, and Britain anyway are certainly on tenterhooks waiting to see who who gets the call up who misses out yeah all the fans are sort of lobbying for their options and uh, yeah we'll go we'll go through the squad in due course but I'm um, just to start with the initial news which will be who will be the Lions captain yeah um, well there's, there's it's kind of in, in my eyes a two horse race but in the bookies eyes there are a few other horses out there we have the, the front runner uh, with the best odds according to odds checker that's our one is uh, Alan Wynne Jones at 4 to 11 which is pretty pretty nearly nailed on but uh, but for the presence of Amaro Itoji at 9 to 4 so yeah. those two are really like even whichever one's captain they're front runners for the test shirts either either way the pair of them and like then beyond that you have Stuart Hogg 11 to 1 a bit less likely he is the Scottish captain Owen Farrell according to the 20 to 1 Owen Farrell to be Lions captain I would Faz find. is England captain is he, he is not? yeah I would, Saracen's I would still call it a dubious decision to make if they if they do go that way um, Ken Owens at 28 to 1 Johnny Sexton 50 to 1 51 to 1 or so there's, uh, Ar- there's Ireland captain of 51 to 1 yeah, and, and, and Faz at 20 to 1 yeah, I mean, th- those are sort of the main options, each of the test captains. I just think of, of the sort of peripheral options that aren't Alan Wynn or Toji, you know, Farrell is obviously on the periphery of the squad. Um, mm-hmm. Personally, I think he goes just because of his um, acumen at inside centre mm-hmm. and obviously his past with the Lions. But, um, you know, he's very much on the fringes. Ken Owens, you know, <laughs> no disrespect to the man, but Alan Wynne Jones is his leader. It seems weird that you wouldn't make him captain. Yeah. Johnny Sexton, issues being on the periphery of the squad as well, might not go, might not start. It, un- unlikely, despite being Ireland captain. Also, just not a great captain, really. Yeah, truly, I don't, I don't. It's not really his. Yeah. Forte. Forte. I, would, I would level the uh, same criticism at Faz to be honest I think they're both pretty dialed in tens who are sometimes a bit abrasive with the ref particularly a French ref which it might very well be and through yeah. the language barrier having a big wide eyed Faz or, or Sexton go Whoa, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's probably not the best look for a captain yeah. you want a bit more of a, a wily a wily soul which is probably why you'd want Alan Wynn ultimately yes. as the guy yeah, who's the ref master chat. of all the things ref chat and uh, yeah H- Hogg is interesting as well he's also quite emotive but um, yeah. it, it, the, it, the issue is sort of leading from full back has its issues yeah well it's going to be physical and it's going to be in the tight that yeah. you want your these leaders probably because it's the set yeah. it's the spring box you're pers- personally I've never minded it like mm. I've never it, it's a nominal thing mm-hmm. um it, it, the, the role itself is is nominal what happens on the pitch can be very much there's a leadership group and there's always going to be a leadership group and yeah. actually making a, a 15 captain sort of puts the onus of you to give leadership roles to a few other heads sure. yeah, yeah. and when you've got such experience and quality that the Lions have like you'd want a brains trust of leaders like really four or five guys at the spine of the team making decisions and talking over decisions yeah. um, so I, I I don't think it's that big a deal I actually think the biggest deal that it is is sort of the the off the field duties and all of that attention that comes with it like you're very much the ambassador for the squad you're going to have yeah. more media to do all of that all of that kind of peripheral stuff and Alan Wynne Jones obviously be very versed in that but there's definitely a temptation for Itoji like the, Itoji's a superstar of the game mm-hmm. and it would certainly be no small thing to have a first black uh, Lions captain that's true yeah. and there's probably possibly quite possibly never been anyone more deserving in terms yeah. of it's just that's a legit argument plus there's probably an argument that he's the one who's nailed on to start at the mm-hmm. very least all the tests if he remains and he, he, fit he's such a leader on the field for yeah. all of his teams as well like what I love about Itoji is that when the team is down and out he's the guy who'll come up with a play to keep you going and drag you back in yeah. I like it, there's there's a lot to be said for for how he leads on the on the field as well and and giving him that title could be it could sort of tip the t- tip the the I don't know the juju scale or the kind of <laughs> subjective scale in the Lions' favor a little bit. It would just be it would be like a nice story. I think he'd do a really good job. I think he'd be a great ambassador. Um, yeah. But that said, Alan Wynne Jones is very much the safe hands. He's done this before. He knows his, st- his shtick, and he's in like he had a classic. Yeah, Nations. classic Nations as well. Um, yeah. So it, like it, it, it will be one of them. Like I, I mean, there are other outside, outside bets, outside punts where you're going like looking for the two hundred and fifty to one shout like Big Ian <laughs> Henderson or someone for who's the old yeah. captain. But it's like. 
he might, he should go, but I don't know if he's yeah. in the test team. Peter so O'Mahony, maybe. Peter O'Mahony, maybe, if you're talk, looking exclusively Irish. The Mish, if you're looking at Scotland, but I, I don't know. Yeah, is the Mish club captain in Edinburgh? No, is he? he's not. That's yeah. why I think, like, if they, like, who is club captain? Now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, like, these are all outside points. I think it's going to be one of those top two. It's going to be one of that short list anyway, and it's likely one of Alan Wynn or Atoji. That seems yeah. to be a toss up between them, and they're, they're well, both if, good. If options. leaks are to be believed, it'll be Alan Wynn, and just knowing Gatlin the way we do. I would expect air on the side of the Welsh air on the side of Alan Wynne Jones yeah. as old lieutenant. Yeah, so I would I would I would suspect that that Alan Wynne Jones Alan Wynne Jones is the man. And um, I can't begrudge either. If you if you if he names either one of them, I'd yeah. be like, okay. If you were making the call, obviously just with the data you have now, you haven't spoken to any of the guys. It's all so 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 subjective. Yeah, it from is our, subjective from this, from this from, distance from our seat. I um, I don't know. I like I do think there's merit to what you say about the first Black Lions captain. I think it would be good positive juju. I think Matoji does deserve it, but. Like again, you say Alan Wynne Jones. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you. So like, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Like, it's going to be one of those two. I'd say probably Jones, but only slightly probably. Um, yeah, and no Stewie, no Stewie, no Stewie. Um, yeah, okay. like there will be Stewie. I think he'll be going, but I don't think he'll be captain. No, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Um, and now we're going to pivot on, obviously, and just look at the squad itself. Yeah, um, you know, we're, there's obviously loads to factor in here. Mm-hmm. Um, what's interesting here the, the first bit that before we just go into the breakdown of each positions um, is that there's this curiosity in, with regards to the amount of players mm-hmm. last time I think they brought it was either 41 or 43 mm-hmm. and this time they've been capped at 36 wow. and the thinking is well you know it's a, it's an 8 match tour instead of a 10 match tour mm-hmm. but I tell you what I'm just going to read these um, the schedule, fixtures the, turnaround. the, the schedule yeah, that yeah. I have here so they have it's it's actually a 9 game Series because there's a home game as well as eight match tour but a nine game series really if you look at it yeah and so you have on the twenty sixth of June they have a game in Murrayfield against Japan which will be from this Lions squad this thirty six man squad mm-hmm. so a week later seven days later they got the Stormers mm-hmm. four days later they got the South African Invitational team mm-hmm. three days later the Sharks three days after that like the Sharks then four days later South Africa A then three days later the Vodacom Bulls yeah. Then uh, another um, week, then there's a week gap, and then it's the Springboks week gap, Springboks week gap, Springboks. So it does kind of open up at the end. It's kind of week on week. Yeah. But it's an intense turnaround. Like, there's four days. I guarantee you as well, just given the, the, the game time that the players have had, that like your Lacanio Ams and your Sia Khaleesi's will be playing for the Sharks in that game. They'll, yeah. they'll have a swing at the Lions in the Sharks jersey. I almost guarantee you they'll do that. Mm, unlike well, unless they're something. playing like the, the US that weekend or whatever their warm-up yeah. game is or they want to be in camp. But even then, I'd say they'll release at least a good portion of their spring box for those games just to get them some high intense games ahead yeah. of the ahead Yeah, because the they've been starved of that. And, yeah. and that's what they're, that was why they were spearheading this Rainbow Cup idea that they really yeah. wanted to mix. They were trying to push to make it happen. Didn't mm. really happen the way they've intended. They're still playing derby games over and over again. Yeah. So yeah, no, they'll want some exposure to some yeah. other rugby. So those are um, tough, tough games with really, really short turnarounds. And if you look at a 36-man squad... You're gonna need to like you can yeah gonna have to field twenty three in each one of those games. There you don't have the forty six luxury. Yeah. So you're gonna have guys playing at least some minutes four days apart. Yeah. So that's, that's like, true. It's gonna be a really really tough uh, period for, for for those guys selected, and certainly there's gonna be a premium on guys who are versatile. Yeah. Guys who can slot Your in different util- positions. Utility backs, yeah. utility front rowers, utility, utility back, back five back, kind of players, yeah, back row yeah. slash second row types, hybrid players. Yeah. Um, hybrid players and fit young ones as well. You're going to want it's going to be a relatively high attrition rate depending on what mm. kind of style they want to go for as well, but yeah. you'd imagine it's going to be high energy and high paced in terms of just the tempo they want to bring. It's summer in terms of down here it's going to be a relative summer thing. It's, it is getting into mm. autumn winter there over in South Africa, but it'll feel a bit, a bit um, hot anyway, just by by European yeah, standards. Altitude especially. is its own thing yeah, as well. Indeed, um, yeah. so all of that, all of that will play into this for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so looking at the sort of makeup of the squad before you go into selecting it, you've got thirty six to choose from, which is for me it's really really tight. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the breakdown by position, looking at that turnaround, for me and I think most people have come to the same conclusion. You're looking at somewhere around twenty forwards, sixteen backs. You could go twenty one and fifteen if you wanted. Yeah. Um, stretch the backs out a little more, especially if you want to, you know, get some more back row talent in. That's understandable. Um, but uh, it's somewhere around twenty forwards and sixteen backs with one that's leeway. The likely split um, if thirty six is, is to yeah. be believed. Which um, we, it, sorry, go on. Which which we just I was just saying we th- we believe it is, and yeah, even within that, then you you break it down into little subcategories yeah. of that. Like within those twenty forwards, 
you're talking nine front rowers, three yeah. per position, four or five locks, and six or seven back rowers, yeah. depending on your emphasis. Like that could the ratio could shift depending on kind of what style they want to play. But I'd imagine yeah. back row by committee is something that the top teams have been doing and rotating them, even mm-hmm. the top club sides, top uh, oh, yeah. top international sides. You do want multiple options that can slot in and out. I think regardless of who's picked and who's not, it would be madness if they started with the same back row in each of the three tests. Mm. It's such an attritional position, you just don't get three high quality performances in three weeks out of a top back rower anymore. It's very rare yeah. that they're at the highest le- level of attrition and when one of the Lions' great strengths is going to be their strength and depth, there's so much talent. Yeah. It just it would be silly not to use that in the test matches. Um, so versatile players and with a mind to everybody who picks could be could be playing a test. But yeah, four yeah. or five locks or six and seven, seven seven back rowers. That's either five and six or four and seven. But some of those guys are going to be able to play both. That's um, yeah, you'd, you'd think. Yeah, and in the back line, then you're looking at about three scrum halves and three out halves. I think that's really necessary. I don't think you can do the three and two skimming just because there's like four yeah. day turnarounds. They might do um, well. What was the Eddie Jones with the two scrum halves who play every single game? That's the other option. Yeah, but, but with like, with three and four day turnarounds, that's yeah, that's crazy. Nuts. Yeah, it does um, seem nuts. You've got to give guys a rest in in there somewhere as well. So I think three scrum halves, three out halves, four centers and six outside backs is kind of the, the main split you're looking at with some scope for change of yeah. one or two of those positions yeah um, yeah so that's the that's sort of the breakup of the squad um, if we go now and, and sort of pivot now to, to each position we'll get sort of into the meat of this conversation so, sure uh, yeah, yeah we'll go 1 to 15 as as, as, as the, re- the usual way the way we like to do and uh, the way they should name the squads as well they I'd love that they, they, I, I wish Gatman, I, I would love if on Thursday he sets the precedent and goes right squad time loose heads lists the loose heads hookers hit lists the hookers wouldn't you wouldn't it be a simpler world if you did that instead yeah, of coming out with that's not the world we're living in Aaron A. Aronson all the way to Zinzan Zola Xander Xander but yeah no. so we will we will try and preface that we will start with the loose heads um, of which there are several contenders it's kind of it's aligned to our uh, team of the tournament uh, the conversation from the Six Nations because that is that was the main audition for it obviously there's club footy as well that'll inform one or two decisions yeah. but uh, but a lot of it will be will be Six Nations form, and then just in terms of contenders from each country we'll start with Scotland they have Rory Sutherland is their main man he was is touch and go with that shoulder injury he picked up so it's kind of whether he'll be fit there is Ollie Kebble and James Batty or Jamie Batty as well um, but I think they are just slightly less likely because they weren't in the position that Sutherland was or doing the job that he was no. um, then from England you have obviously Makovunapola you have Ellis Genge and you have Benno Obano three really high quality young guys there as well like a lot of a lot of heft there um, in Wales you had Win Jones the main one Rodri Jones in behind him and from Ireland I guess you have Keen Healy Dave Kilcoyne and Ed Byrne just behind them yeah those um, are Okay. Very good players, all one and all. To be honest, it's it's a nice thing to be selecting from such a such a high quality field. But we reckon three are probably going to have to yeah, go. Yeah, three are going to go. And if you're narrowing the nominees, like I I do like uh, Ollie Kebble, I like Dave Kilcoyne, but I think they're realistically back in the you're looking at sort of the main starters from each of the countries. Win Jones, one of the players of the Six Nations, Rory Sutherland, explosive scrummager who had like a good Six Nations, but not as good as he was last year. Keen Healy who's been in fine fettle and then uh, for me there's two contenders from England Marco Vonopola and Ellis Genge who've yeah. both been in, in very fine form yeah. and so it's really a question in my mind of picking three from, the, from those five from those five um, yeah well I think in terms of scrummaging acumen is what you're going to have to be looking at as well like, like a little bit yeah Franz Malherbe is probably your opponent he's a massive he's unit. just he's scrumming yeah. really, yeah, really it's, well it's a big springbok um, scrum that you're up yeah. against and to be honest Mako didn't go well the last time he was faced with that beast as well um, yeah like I would of of the two Englishmen, I would think think Ellis Genge is probably a, a favourable option in terms of just scrummaging. Um, yeah, Win Jones, agree. I think, kind of has to go for his playmaking, but I would fear for him at scrum time. I'd like to have the option if you're starting with Win Jones of hauling him out of there for a guy who's for an better, elite scrummager. Elite scrummager. Yeah. Um. Like I'd think Keen Healy should go. Uh, just on his scrummaging showings this year alone, I'm 100 percent with him. Um, yeah. Like he he doesn't have a full eighty in him, but what he does have is forty really good scrummaging minutes, and yeah. he'll, he'll stand oh, well, up. Last um, week, I mean, there's there's endless examples this year with Keen Healy. It's been so under the radar, but that left side of the Irish scrum was a weapon. Mm. He did Weenie Antonio some damage. Um, uh, not, just, not just, well, not just, not yeah. just, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did Weenie Antonio some damage with Will Skelton at, at the weekend. I know La Rochelle beat Leinster, and we'll talk about that later. It's mm. very traumatic, mm-hmm. but um, Keen Healy during that first half really handled that 
colossal left side of the La Rochelle scrum, popped up uh, Antonio a couple of times and, and had him sort of staggered and not himself. Yeah. And it was only really in the second half then when the La Rochelle pack managed to get on top, certainly on that side of the scrum. He dominated the at the Welsh scrum at the Six Nations, the French scrum. Uh, I, I'm sure struggling to remember how the English-Ireland scrum went against England. I think it was neutral enough. Yeah. But against France and against Wales, he was on top. Against Scotland, he was on top. He's be, he's basically bested every uh, tight head he's come up against this yeah. season. And I am fully prepared yeah. for him to be overlooked and to not go. Yeah, um, well, that's always the crack, yeah. isn't it? But, uh, I think they, I think they, they might take Mako, yeah. and I don't think they should. Um, yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking. I think they're probably going to go Mako, Genge, Win jones mm. um, I think that's the probable three. And leave Sutherland behind as well. Leave just Sutherland, Dan Key and Healy behind. And then maybe struggle at scrum time yeah um, I mean I would go Healy Jones Genge I think as yeah. you say and then that's really harsh on Sutherland if Sutherland can get back to I full think fitness Sutherland's injury the... was what killed yeah. him that and, day. and much like we had sure we saw in that Rainbow Cup George Ford we'll talk about the centres later but like, or not George for Gem uh, George uh, no, no, no. I'm not what, sure who you're talking no, about I'm talking about um Oh my god! I'm completely blanking who, who, on this thing. Number thirteen for West George. Uh, oh George North. North. Yeah. Ah, come uh, limp, on, limping man, off George injury. North. Yeah, That's completely blanked on the surname. <laughs> yeah, <for a> second. <laughs> but, uh, but like in terms of the injury, he limped off the field in the first Rainbow Cup Hundred fixture. Um, yeah, fantastic yeah. player. But then similarly, Rory Sutherland's injury, that shoulder injury, the mm. manner of it, the timing of it, it was the end of that. Uh, that's mm. Six Nations so I, I think it'll just be too soon in terms of rehab if you're bringing yeah. a scrummaging loose which is a shame because he, he was definitely in the mix yeah, yeah no so he was and he's a very similar player to Keane Healy in that the primary yeah, he's but a very he's aggressive, a sc- aggressive yeah. scrummager and I think he was in line to oust Keane Healy in that role yeah. but Healy's form has been better even shoulder injury aside Healy's been great so I would very much I know it's patriotic but I would, I would opt on the side of, of Healy but mm. those are the kind of th- those are the kind of ones in the mix and those are our three and, and obviously who we think as well with Mako yeah. um, moving on to the hookers um, hookers there's it's also a high quality short list that you have here in terms of well Wales have one one nominee but he's a bloody good one he's yeah. Ken Owens uh, the sheriff um, in, in, from Ireland it was kind of hooker by committee you had uh, Rob Herring and Ronan Kelleher kind of sharing the jersey throughout yeah, the tournament the starting jerseys. Um, then in England obviously you have Luke Cowan Dickey and Jamie George that really powerful kind of duo that they really ha- they too have and similarly in Scotland another great duo that was discovered only this year was George Turner and Dave Cherry two yeah, fantastic it, hookers that weren't really getting a look in prior but had a yeah. brilliant tournament in the absence of, of McAnally and indeed Fraser Brown the mm. two of them stepped up and were excellent Turner and Cherry and yeah it wouldn't surprise me to see Turner in particular I know Cherry came in late and had a couple of tries Turner was very hot at the start of the tournament and started to cool off towards the end Yeah, I mean to be honest I've, I admired both of their performances but I, I don't quite think they're at the very very top top Lions level especially when you compare them to the other candidates Yeah, um, Rob Herring as well just no no form for me um, yeah even it, that it, his, the Ulster showing it to the weekend wasn't great no, either no it's no, been no. yeah true I think com- comparatively it's I think Kelleher should be ahead of him in the backing order oh, in terms 100%. of from, from the Irish yeah. camp I think if there's one hooker going it should be Kelleher the young yeah. bolter no, yeah, I, I think there's four nominees. I think the bookies have it, you know, it'll be George, Cowan, Dickey, and um, Owens. Ken Owens. Mm. And then, for me, Kelleher is the potential bolter. And I, I personally, I would go with Kelleher. Mm. I like the idea of, of speed as an antidote to what the Springboks bring, sure. even in the forwards. I like the idea of dynamic guys who carry well. Yeah. Kelleher fits that mould. He's technically an excellent scrummager. He's really useful in the line-out mall context. But his carry game is explosive, and I've yet to see him. He also has a jackal game. I've yet to see him really phased. Um, obviously, this is a level above anything he'll have played before, a fit and firing spring box. Yeah. But he's a very exciting well, player. He was a member of that Irish pack that was so mighty and impressive during the whole Six Nations as well, yeah. in terms of just dynamism and, and work rate, and then kind of dominance in terms of their their display they got their part part right from an Irish point of view it was just not clinical off the back of it yeah no I wouldn't mind seeing him again I'm prepared to see him miss out I think they will bring Owens uh, I mm. think they will bring the two English lads even though I, I to be honest Kevin Dickey's form was, was one of the worst I've seen for one of the worst tournaments I've seen from him in an England jersey he's always been very I think very the impressive. worst I think the worst um, he was he was almost like petulant at times. He just didn't see him himself. Yeah. Um, Jamie George, by contrast, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the Saris and their like, lack of form or or, or, or uh, worries around there. For me, he booked the trend. He yeah, played he better was, than he was his opposite great. man in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. He, he's he's first name on the uh, on the on, on yeah, the, he's on big the and hefty list and for me. Kind of, yeah, he's he's hard nosed and experienced and a kind oh, of on a 
Pastor yeah. of the Ball, he, like, he's a really good guy to put in like some of those screens. Mm-hmm. I think of actually him busting through. Was it him who got that try against the All Blacks in the second test when they mm-hmm. gave that little short ball? When mm-hmm. Sexton gave that little short ball. Right, um, yeah. It was him. Oh, it was him, that sorry, try. Yeah. through, yeah, yeah. Um, your pause there was worrying me, but mm-hmm. I, like, I, he has Lions pedigree. He, he he can throw a screen pass, he can play distribution, he can play carry, he's good yeah, brain. Which is what you're going to want to see. Um, like, in terms of just, we'll, we'll get, like, the, these decisions will be informed by, like, combinations that you want yeah. to have in mind and all of that. And the really, way you want to play that's, the spring That's box, kind of what's yeah. informed about, about, about it. There was a great clip of, uh, I think it was a documentary behind the scenes 12 years ago, the last time they were in, uh, in South Africa, and it was McGeekin who was, who was co- leading that tour at the time and uh, there was a debate about uh, whether to pick Croft or Stephen Ferris at the time Tom yeah, Croft yeah. or Stephen Ferris both very fine sixes both in flying form but very different and they ended up erring on the side of Croft in because pace Yeah. Um, and I didn't hate the decision at all now ultimately they ended up losing the series but I don't think that's what you decided uh, oh, about Croft played well yeah Croft played really well and yeah. it was it was a good in, insight into the mindset it's like are we going there to try and pick the biggest possible players from these, these four nations to try and go toe to toe with the Springboks at their game yeah. no you shouldn't be you should be trying to be the quicker yeah. team the more Certainly dynamic the team and, and yeah. the, the, the good thing about Jamie George is that he fits both moulds because yeah. obviously you will need a bit of size oh, you'll need a just to come and, front row and, and, and yeah. on D you know you, yeah. you, you, you can't really speed your way around them on D like if Eben Etzebeth is coming at you off nine yeah. you're going to have to deal with that and you are going to need some enforcers in there to help you do that and yeah. it's important to get the balance right I sidestepped yeah. Etzebeth three times unfortunately he was in possession all three of them <laughs> yeah yeah indeed <laughs> um, but uh, yeah so we've um, we've Ken with Ken Owens I think going for sure uh, one of the one of the leaders well one of the on the short list for captain really good breakdown player really wily I think mm-hmm. he had a great game when the Springboks played the um, the Wales in the, in the World, World Cup. Cup as well yeah I, I just yeah I mean, he's highly rated and with good reason he's a very very smart operator and good footballer as well yeah. good in the open field himself and then for me the bolter is is Kelleher over Cowan Dickey I'd understand if they didn't go for it listen Cowan Dickey's got way more experience He's got yeah. way more credit in the bank. He's been playing Test Rugby for years. Yeah. But Kelleher's the kind of guy, and I, I know there's a theme here of me going with um, dynamic Irish forwards and trying to chuck them in as bolters. We are biased. You can call us that. We are we are Irish, and we have we have our issues there. It's but true. I promise you I will not be as generous to the Irish backs no, when we get there. No, indeed. I think yeah. our forward pack was one of the best in the Six Nations, yeah. and our backs let us down con- consistently. So yes. that's, that's kind of my thinking as well. I think our forward pack's been excellent, and, and Kelleher's a big part of that. So personally, Kelleher over Cow and Dickey, probability Cow and Dickey over Kelleher. That's, I think so, yeah. yeah. And, and and unlucky on the Scots to be missing out in that reckoning as well. Because they went The pair great. of them yeah, were yeah. brilliant as well. So yeah. And to be fair, they will have to be kind of there, thereabouts, because it's only a 36-man squad, and as you pointed out with the turnaround, like the injuries will happen, so mm. there will be call-ups as well. It's po- very possible that the, those three go, but then it could be Kelleher starting the test with the first test match if, if things go go. You all knows, kinds yeah, of, all kinds of mad. T- Turner and Cherry on, on, on retainer. Would you hate to see Turner named in the squad? Would it shock no. you? Yeah, no, it wouldn't. I, I think, yeah. like, I, to be honest, I think that is one of the higher quality shortlists that you'll yeah. see. I think every single one of the players we named there are really really good so that's just capable of doing these are yeah, these yeah. are the headaches that lions kind of lions selections bring up because they're you're you're omitting great players all the time when you're yeah. selecting the lion squad um anyway with that we will move on to the a huge debate in terms of this these arguably the most important three players to go on tour tight heads to face the spring box um, and yeah. you're gonna have to bring at least three of them and in terms of candidates from ireland you're talking tig furlong andrew porter uh from england you're talking Kyle Sinclair, Will Stewart, Harry Williams. Uh, from Wales, Thomas Francis and Leon Brown. Uh, and from Scotland, you have Xander Fagerson, Nell and Simon Bergen. Yeah. Um, a, lot of, a lot of good quality uh, tight heads there. You're going to have to bring at least three. One of them is already picked in my mind. I think Tyke Furlong is going. For me I think too. Sinclair me is too. going. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think those then, jerseys are as secure as can be, and I think it would be very impressive for anybody else, barring injury, to break their way into the into the starting test team. Yeah, I think Sinclair is a very good scrummager. He's really getting on. He also has the extra things in the loose. Yeah, he can throw a pass just like Jamie George. He's good reading like, of the screen like play. Furlong. Um, and Furlong is magnificent. He's brilliant in the open field. Um, he did get bumped off for the first time I've ever seen in his career. He got bumped off by Will Skelton at the weekend. Finally yeah. ran into a bigger man. But he's bigger than most men. And mm-hmm. he's just... Tag, Tag Furlong is kind of blanket you can rely on 
to lock down a tough side of the scrum, even against yeah. a guy like Kitzhoff, yeah. um, where Dan Cole was 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 yeah, made was a mug a, was of. a terrible. Uh, yeah, 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 indeed, yeah. And, and and certainly the Lions won't have won't have that issue off their bench. Yeah. Um, but the third option is interesting. Um, Porter apparently is the favourite. Um, it's, uh, it's down to versatility. Um, yeah. In terms of he, in theory, he can switch and play play loose head as well. Now, uh, for all of that is discussed, and it comes up in Irish media circles. I can't remember him playing at loose head. It's not. It's been a while. Yeah, like since he's done that eight years so yeah so it seems dubious to yeah. just be saying oh he can switch because um, yeah. it's like well he can try and switch anyway maybe maybe any of them can switch and then be found yeah, out I mean it's, it's um, like it really is using the whole other half of your body in terms of like the dynamic work that's being done is by your left arm if you're yeah. a righty and you're on the tight head side the whole time I can't imagine the switch to working with your left arm is that easy yeah um, but, yeah I, 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 I don't really rate that and I think that there's there's definitely a case for not going with Porter. He's he's good in the loose. He's a very good jackal threat. He's got there's a lot to him you like. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just seen him be crushed to the scrum. I've seen Mako Onopola do a job on him. Sure, like yeah. I just I have I'm not totally convinced about his scrummaging prowess, especially like when you're just up against the likes of Kitsoff who just. Yeah ruthlessly expose any weakness that's in yeah. there um, I definitely see a scenario where Porter gets munched in the scrum and that's a real problem yeah. like you could even argue like someone like Xander Fagerson even WP Nell and Harry think, Williams is the other one who didn't get much test time but is a lock at the scrum most of the time I think those three for me are the ones that jump out as like scrum security first yeah, yeah. that's what from a third choice ch- tight head I'm not looking for razzle dazzle I'm looking for scrummaging security if, if, if shit hits the fan this guy's going to come in and there's not going to be a problem at the scrum. Yeah. That's what you want. That's what that's um, what you want. I don't, Nell is an argument. Like, Nell is an argument, yeah. although there is a counter-argument that very often South Africans who don't play for the Springboks don't perform that well when they face the mighty Springboks. Um, yeah, you've seen that once I've or twice. I've seen that, right. oh, yeah, yeah. that at least once or twice. I see it all the time. <laughs> Anytime a South African who's playing for Italy or somewhere turns up against them, they're the ones. Or even our own CJ Stander will go back and, re- and give away a red card yeah. um, over, over there. Yeah, and it, like it's... It's a it's a it's enough to be called a trend. Is that so why we worry about Duhan yeah. van der Merve and CJ himself as again? Oh, in your mind. it might be in my mind. Yeah, anyway. yeah. I don't know if it will be in Gatlin's. I don't know. It's a pet theory of mine, but it does play out that way a lot. It's very very rare that I see mm. a South African play well against the Springboks. Yeah, didn't like, like Ricard even... Strauss have a decent game against Maybe them? He had a decent game era. for Ireland, but like yeah. exception rather than rule. <laughs> <laughs> so I would worry about Nell and the fact that uh, Scotland didn't give him his his fair shake. I do think he is their the best. I, I would worry about Xander. In fact, I wouldn't bring Xander just because of how dodge he was against the French scrum and how dodge he was against many a scrum in terms of oh. going down. Even the Welsh scrum, he gave away a penalty in the first yeah, minute it was the, of it was, game. It, he, like he um, is a good scrummager, but he had this thing in the Six Nations where the first scrum of the was game always a penalty he was against slipping him. Yeah, yeah. and giving up a pen. Um, yeah, that's and right. also like the Six Nations scrummaging as 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 good as it is like this is another level this is the yeah. Springboks and what's a tight head for like again like yeah. I don't want to be seeing the razzle dazzle it's like Xander can throw a good pass like, I don't really care he, he's going to be scrummaging against the Springboks yeah that's my that's, theory that's certainly the on third choice tight head that's all you need yeah. so on that basis who do you reckon who, well, who do you reckon they'll go for and then who do you who do you think should go I reckon they'll go for Porter um, for the versatility option um, in terms mm. of just an extra option at loose head as well in terms of midweek games yeah. they might they might play him at loose head in mid in midweek kind of thing. I don't Why know though, if you're bringing. I don't know. Heads, like right? I think I think they will bring him just for his versatility. Um, I I don't know. I wouldn't hate to see uh, Harry Williams go because as you say he's been a rock, but I think he. He won't be any test rugby. He just hasn't yeah. played any test for rugby, and I'm not convinced by Will Stewart, to be no, honest. No, um, so, yeah, I think nearly by default it'll be Porter, nearly. Mm. But uh, I'm not I as know. down on Xander as you are, although I do understand your concerns. Well, he got himself um, red. He didn't have a great showing, got himself red carded, missed the rest of the tournament, came back, and didn't have a great showing. So. Yeah, I kind of get... I don't think he's been as bad as all that. He's had good moments in the Six Nations as well, but uh, yeah, Nell is a favourite of mine. I, I personally, like, if I was allowed to wave the wand I might take the punt on Nell just because I really back him to lock down a scrum he is a, a very he, fine scrum he's a very fine scrum he's kind of a short enough guy though as well so you'd be somewhat fearful but I've just I've never seen him really rock to the scrum he's yeah. been awesome every time he's been asked he's also the good. only guy to give Keane Healy trouble all season that's long. right that's um, right yeah, yeah. He's a very technical scrum yeah so I think Nell might be my bolter that's a complete bolter Scott, even Scott's be like what because yeah. he hasn't even been featured but like I just I, I like his acumen at yeah. the scrum which Again, is what it's all about it, it is what, like 
jobs one through ten yeah. for a tight head is can he lock down a scrum? Like yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter beyond that at all. Like, well, it does. It does to, it some, does extent, to some, extent, some extent, but, yeah, yeah. but it like ask us a Safa about it, and it's like, well, what's the point? What's like, the like, all the flashy stuff in the world, if you're getting monstered by kits off every time you scrum down, there's no point. You can't you're never going to be a net positive. Indeed. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's your first primary yeah, yeah. role as a tight head, and it might be the very the most important uh, position for the Lions is just having that guy at tight head who can lock it down. It looks like it'll be furlong, but if he's struggling, they'll need to be able to haul him out there and bring on Sinclair as well. Like they, yeah, they those are rotation. the top two, I think, without question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a debate then as to who goes with them, but they will bring three because it is that attritional. And, and I did, I, we didn't really make mention of Thomas Francis or, or Leon Brown, but I don't think either did, did well enough to, to deserve mention, really. And no, I would be... No. Ve- like, they were very much holding it together for Wales' scrum yeah, and against... Times against not. And at times not. Yeah, yeah. And the scrum they'll be facing this time will be more mighty so I would worry yeah. about them um, yeah. but we will pivot on to the engine room um, which will also be important in terms of set piece and scrum time you're talking line out leaders you're talking potential captains I'm sure the two top nominees are both in yeah. that position but uh, just going through the candidates uh, you have obviously from England you have Maro Itoji, Johnny Hill and Charlie Ewells as well two other big men yeah. uh, from Ireland you have your Tyg Byrne James Ryan Ian Henderson Ryan Baird um, from uh, Scotland you had a fair few of Scott Cummings, Johnny Gray, Sam Skinner, Grant Gilchrist, Richie Gray, uh, and then from Wales as well, Adam Beard, very impressive this year, Corey Hill, Alan Wynne Jones, and Jake Ball. Yeah. So a lot of lot of locks to be listing. Yeah, and um, I think you're bringing at least you're probably bringing you know five not four or five nominal locks, but five guys certainly who can play lock. Yeah, um, indeed. So, so that's that's where you have your your kind of like the likes of Ryan Baird or even Sam Skinner has slotted in. Or, well, or more is the point, I think. Uh, Charlie uh, Ewells uh, has yeah, well, plays in the back row sometimes. I'm, I'm not sure any of those will go, but more no. is the point like Ty Burn down as a lock. He yeah. might be selected as a lock and play mostly at six. Yeah, I think like in terms of options, you're looking at um, Atoji. By the way, has played six as well. But yeah, Ato- Atoji right. um, and uh, Alan Wynne Jones. Alan Wynne Jones likely to be captain. Itoji, the only guy pushing him. Itoji's truly elite, and yeah. um, uh, he he will uh, absolutely be on the plane if not captain. Likewise, Alan Wynne Jones. Mm-hmm. And then you're looking at an interesting uh, selection of ideas. I think Kai yeah. Byrne ha- was in the form of his life. I think he's the style of back rower you want against the Springboks. He's wor- truly world class, almost to a David Pocock fashion over the ball. Mm-hmm. Not quite, but almost. He's he's excellent over the ball. Yeah, and he's wonderful in the loose. He's a great link up player, really quick as well. Mm-hmm. So he like he's as a I prefer him as a back row to a lock, especially right. against the certainly Spurs. wouldn't pick him at lock against um, those Safa locks. Yeah, but like. he's he's the kind of guy who who goes a lock and could play in the back rows test team, in the test team, but crucially can play lock against yeah. you know South Africa Invitational or whoever the hell they're yeah, playing indeed, on yeah. a three day turnaround. He can play lock in those games. So I think those three are, are certs, and then you're looking at really two extras from from that two list. From, from well, oh, I don't know which which Scott you would bring because they started and finished the tournament with with different I, lock. Johnny combos. Gray has the best chance. Johnny Gray think. probably should go. And good I for think. Exeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he he has a better shout than our own. Um, uh, James, James Ryan, Ryan who would have been a nailed on guy last yeah. year this time last year but in terms of the year's form he just hasn't hasn't yeah. shown it like, I, mean, I think there was the, I, I kind of sometimes harken back to 2018 when he was burst on the scene and he went through that really long period of he, this guy's never lost a game of professional yeah. rugby like there was real buzz about him in Ireland like he was going to be sort of our answer to a toji and he was going to have that like extra engine he's had a couple of injuries here and there and he's been beaten up one or two times in, in big test games and he's just not quite the same force. He's 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 not really got the dexterity of of like a long passing game. I don't know if I'd properly trust him in a distribution role on the screen. Mm-hmm. He tends to truck it up a lot. He tends to kind of carry hard into someone's shoulder. And while he does get the best of the carry most of the time, I just I don't think he's been truly elite. He doesn't call lineouts for Ireland. Mm-hmm. I think there's just one too many hiccups with James Ryan down to getting like absolutely bested by Will Skelton at the weekend in yeah. terms of his position just outshone and outmatched mm-hmm. firmly and thoroughly by a big Ebenezer like figure Indeed. I just don't know if I trust James Ryan and that's hand on heart like for me Ireland's best nominee is Big Ian Henderson who's yeah. very similar to Safa Lox in the way Indeed. he goes about I think and, he should likely go yeah. because of that and then the other idea of a bolter is Ryan Baird he's a bit on the periphery but it's nah. like he's another guy who's a six slash lock also but, struggled uh, with Skelton also struggled with Skelton he only came in off the bench to yeah. play but uh, yeah that, like those got kind of players for that I think Ty Byrne is the one who will get the nod there in that regard and what about Adam Beard Henderson that's the other one yeah like does Beard slot into the, the back row he had a fabulous fabulous Six Nations 
I just don't know if you'd, you'd trust to pick him because mm. ultimately you're, you're probably going Alan Wynn and, and, and a Toji and then you're going to be like... You need a big enforcer for yeah, sure. So you, you need a Johnny Gray. You possibly need a Johnny Gray and a Big Ian Henderson. Mm. That um, might be the art. That might be where they go. Is just yeah, heft. Beard is it the would have been Johnny one. Hill. Uh, Johnny Hill, I think, actually did himself a disservice this season as well because he yeah. ended up losing the jersey for England. He started with the jersey, didn't impress, then Ewells came in. Yeah. So uh, I think big, big Johnny Johnny Hill might be unfortunate and miss out as well. Um, there are other Scottish guys there who played really, really well. Scott Cummings as well and Sam Skinner did, yeah. did a great job, but I think they are just I never the rate, I never rated Scott Cummings as form. Well, mm. Actually, that's really harsh. He he had he had some great games at the start of the tournament, and so too did Johnny Gray. Mm. That like they, they, uh, Cummins, I think, got hurt, injured somewhere along the line yeah. as well. But they did really fade against that Irish pack. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I would go with Ian Henderson, and I I possibly chuck Adam Beard in there. I like I am wondering aloud like whether it's too slight then. Yeah. Like whether you've got too many sort of rangy guys because I've obviously got Ty Byrne. Alan Wynne Jones is an excellent like line out aficionado and he's a wonderful thinker on the game, but he's not that raw power. Mm-hmm. So like if a Toji goes down, is it just Ian Henderson and no real big power guy to bring off mm-hmm. the bench? Maybe you need Henderson and Gray, so maybe that's what you go with. But yeah. I think Adam Beard is super lucky to, to miss out and I, I would be very close to selecting Adam yeah. Beard myself. Yeah. I'd certainly have him on, on first reserve. Yeah. Um yeah, a couple of other guys is like I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I, I think that's kind of the main of it I don't know who you'd have on extra retainer James Ryan would be on, on extra reserve I guess yeah um, when, when someone goes down yeah and, and James Ryan is one of the bookies favourites to go I mean, indeed a lot of yeah, people no, are like, talking about Ryan, uh, James Ryan Alan Wynne jones and Atoji or Shoe-ins I just haven't seen it from Ryan this yeah. year really I, th- I think Ian Henderson was better than him at the Six Nations he was. and that should and play in indeed yeah. it should play be a factor because that, that Irish pack was so good and, and Ryan was injured for, for a long, long yeah, period yeah. of it so it was it was kind of yeah, it was it was Ty Byrne and Ian and uh, Biggie and Henderson were doing a lot of work in terms of the rowing uh, acumen there, and um, yeah, I, I think it will likely be five uh, of those with yeah. with with Ty Byrne with, with um, at least one or two yeah in, in guys guys like that who are rotatable, but uh, the good two guys who are definite shoe ins I think are Alan Wynn and Atoji. Beyond yeah, that, and beyond Ty that, it's Byrne, a mix. I, I, Ty Byrne, Ty Byrne, I think will go as either a, as a yeah. like he may go as a back rower. Yeah. You don't know, but uh, he will be on the plane. I would. I would be be willing to put money on um, absolutely um, and now we have speaking of the back row yeah real Sophie's Choice stuff going on at the back row I think you're selecting on top of Ty Burner we have in there you're selecting six, yeah, and um, so it's it's possibly going to be seven, but like if you that's only if you count Ty Byrne or, or Ian Henderson as a back rower. So I think six out and out back rowers of these guys, yeah, and so obviously you've got well from Welsh candidates, you've got Josh Navidi and Justin Tipperick and Toby Falatau, all of whom could go. Aaron Rainwright and James Botham on the periphery um, for Ireland. CJ Stander, uh, unquestionably Ty Byrne, we've in there. Will Connors, Jack Conan, Reese Ruddock, Peter O'Mahony, we really did. Have a lot of, yeah, yeah. There was a fair bit of back row by committee. It may serve their chances in in bad stead because like nobody Con- was Connors and Josh either. Van der Feer both had fantastic performances, total seven performances yeah. in that Six Nations and campaign. Connors is kind of injured now, yeah. so he's kind of out of the reckoning. Um, mm. Scotland, obviously Hamish Watson, Jamie yeah. Ritchie, Matt Fagerson also had a fine tournament. He did yeah. Um, Nick mm-hmm. Haining and Gary Graham also featured, but will likely not be involved. I think Gary Graham's still injured. Mm-hmm. Um, for England, Tom Curry was the standout. He was absolutely brilliant. And then you've got Billy. Napola, Mark Wilson, uh, Ben Earl, also yeah, wins, Courtney yeah. Laws unfortunately picked up an injury, and then obviously from uh, Bolter's not involved in the Six Nations, you've got Sam Simmons, who everybody's talking about from Exeter. Yeah, you've got Alex Dombrandt as a potential mad shout because he's been good for the Quins, but like probably not as good as Sam Simmons Indeed. and has played. Yeah. but there's a bit of buzz about him, and obviously Sam Underhill is back and playing for Bath, and he's you know featured in World Cup finals and Sean in World Cup semi finals against the All Blacks, and is mm-hmm. a truly a wonderful player himself. So he is. Yeah, he, yeah, he could easily go as it, well. It is an absolute. Sophie's choice. Do you bring uh, like I I presume he you bring Falatau, who's a nominated for Player of the Year and is an out and out number eight. But then you have our argument that Conan is playing as well as him in in, in yeah. In Falatau, a Falatau has a lot of credit in the bank and he has the yeah. trust of Gatland. He and does. He played That's really well in New Zealand four years ago. Yeah. The other guy is Hamish Watson, another nominee yeah. for your for Player of the Six Nations. Almost undoubtedly going. Um, mm. Tipperick, I think, should go because he's yeah. awesome. No, it's, Tipperick um, is the best footballer of them, and yeah. he's got that tight burn quality too. It's, it's well. also the ranginess um, and speed. You want guys like Tipperick and Falatau and Orkhon and guys like rangy footballers out in mm-hmm. the wide channels. That's what you want your back row to be about, pulling the spring box this yeah, way. A couple of enforcers um, as well. Yeah, indeed, which is where you get into the CJ debate versus Curry versus, mm-hmm. I don't know, who who would the other option be? Mark Wilson. Oh, geez, no. no, it's not no, going to be Wilson. Per- Personally, on form, 
the ones that would jump out. Like, I think Hamish Watson, like, on paper, there's an element of, like, isn't this a guy who's very much just loves to run at the contact, going up against guys who can handle that? And I definitely get that concern. And there's mm-hmm. scope for, if he doesn't go well, you know, bringing someone else in, like a Tipperick. But his form is just undeniable. He's relentless, uh, mm-hmm. relentlessly physically goes forward in the contact. He actually picks some sharp lines, passing games improving. And then what has him standing out also is that defense, that jackal ability. Yeah. He's tremendous in that area. And he's just a real awesome playmaker. Um, one of the form back rows in the world. And I think he's definitely there. Mm-hmm. I think... Um, Tom Curry for England was probably yeah. their best player. He was everywhere. Yeah. Outstanding footballer. Um, really physical as well. Punches above his weight just like uh, Mish does. Mm-hmm. Great tackler, great nuts and bolts player and also really good in the screen action and, and makes good line breaks and links up with good offensive instincts as well for a back rower. Yeah. Um, so those two for sure. I think... Um, then you're looking at uh, the, the Welsh options. I think Faletau certainly. That's three of your six right there. Tipperick for me goes... Um, and then you have a couple of others to choose. You've got four there, and then mm. you have a couple of others to choose, and then it gets interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I like. I don't mind the idea of Jack Conan. I think his form, like he might have done enough in terms of his form, was. He outplayed. He outplayed England. He was absolutely brilliant in that game. He was changed Ireland's way of playing almost individually. I know Ireland shifted as well, but him coming back into that team. Playing in the wide channels distribution, yeah, that was option. a proper number eight. The hands yeah, for that yeah. Earl's try yeah, when he flicked indeed. it back in, and even the fact that he was hanging out on the wing, ready to poach for his own try that he grabs. Like, yeah, yeah, no, him, himself and Falato are, are the two standout number eights in terms well, of what just about Billy number v eights. And Sam Simmons. Yeah, see, this is it. Billy V and Sam Sim- Simmons might be in with a better shout than poor young Conan because I think just in and pedigree alone, Billy V, I, I would be. So, like so up and down, isn't it? Like well, it's tough yeah. to bring him because like not only is he not in form, but the last time he faced the Springbok side, he was beat to pull, beat to a pulp, and ended up going off. And the last time we saw him in an international context, he got beat, beaten up by CJ Stander, and then ultimately knocked out. Uh, well, granted by an it's illegal har- challenge, harsh to blame that KO. No, I know, but it's um, like in terms of what he's shown this season, and then going back to the, the World Cup excellent final, excellent game against France, didn't he? And then like yeah, that was the surprise that he didn't really kick on against Ireland. Yeah, like I don't um, know. Like con- considering Falato has been nominated for player the the Six Nations, and then you have a guy like Conan who's a down yeah. number eight in better form, and you have the the Sam Simmons debate as well. Although I don't know if Sam Simmons has done enough in recent times. Certainly no. the showing against Leinster where he was absolutely kind of bottled up, and, and Leon the week before. Yeah. I'd like I think his Champions Cup form, given that you can't see him in a Test context, the last two games he played just like I was watching him sort of eager to see because I, I watch a bit of Premiership and I've seen his highlights but I don't watch it as religiously as I'd watch the European stuff Yeah, and yeah I was watching him with a keen eye and he didn't really deliver in those games and I think that'll be enough to keep him out on this yeah. occasion um, but certainly I think it's uh, it's like it. Uh, I think those four are are very likely of Tipperick um, Tipperick Watson Curry and who was the other one I said Falato, um, and then yeah the two others very interesting like Jack Conan's a pet of mine I think Jamie Ritchie also could easily be involved yeah. like I think there's a lot of guys really of a similar level and you wouldn't you wouldn't hate to see any of them go and I would include sort of your, your Billy V's and your, and your Simmons and that like they could easily rock up and deliver yeah. CJ Standers the other one who a lot of people are romantic about career swan song going back to South Africa and he would be a nice a proper enforcer in there a guy who's about hitting and, yes. and stopping things and I think mm defensively it's important to have that balance it is you um, definitely need a hard nosed guy and Sam think, Underhill is the other one defensively who yeah, had a huge indeed. advantage as well um, yeah like these are the these are the debates I don't know I don't know I think like it's it's funny because like the Irish back row did so well mm. but none of them really individually did mm. it was it was a back row by committee kind of thing so I don't know if they're standing out that much um, I'll tell you what the bookies say mm. the bookies say Hamish Watson Tom Curry um, those are the the ones we said Justin Tipperick Toby Falato, and then their two extras are Josh Navidi and CJ Stander see I don't know about that I just don't know about that mm. like uh, the Welsh back row as impressive as it can be like they, they were bullied a lot of the time and were more clinical with the less ball that they had they weren't like so dominating no games Navidi. and Navidi is great Navidi as well Navidi is great as well and he is the kind of quick rangy guy that you do want to be facing the uh, facing the Springboks I just 
I don't know. If is, is is he a better option at seven than like the little turbo bunny Josh van der Fleer? You know, I don't know. Well, for me, your next best seven is Sam Underhill. Sam Underhill as well, yeah. playing brilliantly. He's is just back, but he is he's the guy who played really well. And, and in terms of going back to that World Cup final, like Tom Curry kind of did the disappearing act, same, same as Billy V, and it was only Sam Underhill who was game in that game for the fight and mm. really did put his hand up. Um, it wasn't enough, but it was it, he was very impressive. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I think it's a toss-up. I think they're really high-quality headaches. I'm not sure what Gatlin's thinking is going to be on it. Will yeah. he end up bringing CJ for that hard-hitting thing? Will he end up omitting CJ for that rangy, quick thing? And you I do want to balance. You do have yeah. Tyburn. You do have Justin Tipperick. And then you have like Curry as and you have Falatau as well. And then you have Curry and Watson as your kind of enforcers. Personally, like CJ has been great this year. I think I'd probably go with my two extras on top of our first four. Of, of Mish, Curry, Tipperick and Faletau I would go with um, Underhill I think Underhill is elite mm. properly elite possibly a cut above the rest and then with my last one I would totally biasly chuck in Conan just because I really rate his form and I know Leinster were beaten by La Rochelle but actually I just thought system wise they just didn't put Conan in the right places the man needs to be wide you need to put him in space same, same channel as Faletau yeah. he's an out and out number yeah. eight same as Faletau yeah you need to um, work screens in to get the best out of him and even in his limited capacity you could just see there was a little something extra when he touched the ball even against those big La Rochelle forwards he always carried with more dynamism than the rest yeah. and I just really like him there's been talk about Caelan Doris from this coaching tickets but uh, I, I don't think there's a prayer that Conan gets in the play and he's just a pet of mine mm. I think they, they'd probably go with CJ Stander and, and maybe Underhill as well although Jamie mm. Ritchie you could see easily as well yeah those are those are yeah. good options jeez it's it's an absolute headache of yeah so many thing. names but and, yeah, and, that, you got, you, be, whoever, and whoever is named you're guaranteed at least one of them will go down injured from the attritional rate of yeah. it and then someone else will be called up I, I'm, I would pretty much guarantee that now pre-tour yeah. and I, 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 um, I, I, I would definitely not hate it if, if Jamie Ritchie went if Underhill went instead of Conan absolutely I def like even if Billy V or Sam Simmons gets the nod, if like or some bolter like Ben Earl, like they all have the potential to rise to the occasion. They do, and it's yeah. very very tough to know at this stage who'll flop and who'll, who'll and who'll what succeed. combination will work as well. Yeah, yeah you do want like like it's yeah. it's very much when they're in their own country, they know yeah. the system that they're playing in, and they all kind of divide the work that way. That's kind of what's interesting about the Lions is how will those new formation new kind of partnerships form and what relationship will you see with the Welsh yeah. guys and the Scottish guys in the back row I, like it, it, re, it remains to be seen but I think all the, those four that you listed as the main front runners I think they are definitely going and then it's on the whims of Gatland uh, which one which two uh, or potentially more he wants to bring with him depending if he wants to put Ty Byrne down as a back row and bring a different hefty lock that could change things as well but uh, yeah uh, 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 those four assert outside of that Sophie's choice yeah it's tough it's tough for sure <laughs> Um, listen we're going to move on obviously that was the pack the, the main bulk the 20 and uh, on account of this 36 man squad things do really really tighten up in this back line and uh, yeah, yeah the, the decisions get way more interesting um, I think the schedule necessitates three scrum halves and three out halves so uh, starting there and looking at the candidates first of all for scrum half Wales is a fun one they've got loads of different scrum halves who all play very similar games and do so very effectively yeah. Garrett Davis Thomas Williams Kieran Hardy Lloyd Williams yeah. um, then from Ireland obviously Conor Murray uh, seems uh, favoured to get in and, and get the jersey at this point Gibson Park also played but he hasn't featured he's been injured so he's unlikely and then obviously Cooney there's been a bit of hype about despite not playing any test rugby but he also picked up an injury recently which might count against him yeah. and I think he was long odds to feature anyway and then uh, the young Craig Kelly Casey was also be a mad bolter who you look to see. would be a spanner yeah. thrown into works. I really doubt it. And from Scotland as well, you have Ali Price, the incumbent, the guy who they lean on outside of him. You have Scott Scott Steele and George Horn. But uh, I think in, if there's one Scott going in that position, it'll likely be Ali Price. Um, yeah. Then from England, you have Ben Youngs and Dan Robson. They were the only, they were two, the only to two to feature. But then you have Ben Spencer, the actual best out yeah. of the scrum half they have. And then Danny Kerr, even as an option. Yeah, well, beyond Kerr, that, Kerr, even Wigglesworth is yeah. coming off the bench. Um, uh, ben Spencer's form is great. I think he's he's hurting a little bit because Bath are making him do so much that, he, that he's, he's, he's not place he's, kicks for them. He's yeah. not a place kicker. But yeah. No, um, he's, he's not being led to shine. Uh, ben Youngs obviously has ruled him himself out he, for personal reasons for yeah. the second Lions tour in a row which is interesting but it obviously interesting. Yeah. apparently unrelated it has to do with his wife being pregnant he doesn't yeah. want to be away there's Covid concerns 
all of that wrapped up into it so Ben Young's apparently not featuring for the second Lions tour in a row yeah. which does make things uh, interesting uh, like it makes the likelihood of an English Bolt or a Danny Kerr or a Ben Spencer um, very very likely in my yeah. mind I like Ali Price blows so hot and cold for me like he has mo- in, like in matches he blows hot and cold he, does. he has moments where he's brilliant and then he has moments where he slows down and, and, and gets a little loose and his passes look a little laboured yeah. it's not something it's not a criticism you could level at the Welsh guys no I like personally if you ask me I think bringing Conor Murray and two Welsh guys might make sense yeah I, I think oh. Conor Murray Garrett Davis and then like Thomas Williams is obviously the guy who's been a form. I loved Kieran Hardy's brief contribution. It, I, like um, it's funny because they are such similar players, but I actually thought Kieran Hardy's showing in that England game was the best showing of any Welsh scrummy in the yeah. whole tournament. But then he got injured, so he didn't have a run he of games suffered with for it. a lack of minutes. Um, yeah. Indeed, so like it, it's a tough one. What I would say is that you go back to that World Cup again, which is the only time, like in terms of just looking at, at the potential opponents, it will be a different Springbok team. There have been a few guys who've emerged in the, the last year in terms of uh, real bolters for them as well. But you look at the English showing against the Springboks and just how impotent they were and how mm. bad Ben Youngs was in that game and he wasn't able to be hauled off. Now, obviously, he's not an option. But uh, when you look back to the semi-final, it was Wales who gave them a right rattle. Mm. And uh, like it was a very much a defensive chess match, which it may have to be for a time. But I, I certainly like the idea of having Welsh scrummies who can kind of move us around at a clip. Because what I wouldn't like is to see Conor Murray, the nailed-on starter, uh, like and and just meaning that we're setting up to box kick into the air against them and be yeah. pretty slow because uh, like he's just it's, been it's, slow. Yeah, it's, it's not how Murray's form was for the Lions, obviously four no, years it wasn't. ago. And yeah, you'd like to think that the new coaches can sort of beat that that out of him. But yeah, that's a massive concern. His form isn't isn't all that great despite being being favoured. Like for me, if I was picking a test team tomorrow. I would go with Garrett Davis. Mm. So he's on the plane. I think Murray is on the plane. He's loads of credit in the bank. His ceiling is probably higher than all of the other scrum halves. Mm. Um, and then you have a third choice, which could be, like in my mind, Thomas Williams is a decent shout. I think he drives a good clip. Kieran Hardy suffers for the lack of games. Mm. And then your your other, like Ali Price, I don't think can go. I just don't trust him enough. And then like you, I think your other options are the two English bolters. Kerr has been in great form. Really quick scrum half as yeah. a potential third choice he could bring great energy to the sort of midweek games yeah. and then potentially play well enough to get on the bench for a test game and really change the game that is, that is true there's definitely um, scope for that um, and Ben Spencer's the other one who's a real yeah. good nuts and bolts scrum half who probably hasn't got the test uh, credit he deserves yeah I, I like um, in terms of if you're going inside the mind of Gatland picking the likes of Ben Spencer and then maybe you know <laughs> Don Brandt or someone just pick a few of the English lads who Eddie Jones is ignoring and have them do really well for the Lions it's, it's the kind of little thing that he might do <laughs> um, so yeah. if, you're, if you're going with as in Murray Davies as, as the rotation of your first two choice and then a player to be named later it could be any number of those guys I wouldn't hate to see Ben Spencer go I think he's he's very very good he hasn't really had the chance at test level and yeah, give him a chance in the midweek team and see if he can force his way in there yeah um, personally I would go with I, I think Thomas Williams I, I would t- toss up between Thomas Williams and Danny Kerr um, D- Danny Kerr can't box kick that is a problem. You don't. You is don't it want. A problem? You don't want it. No. Well, like obviously, you don't want a box kick. None of the Welsh scrum halves can box kick. No. Garrett they, Davis can't box kick effectively. Yeah, yeah. Like if you need him to exit with his box kick, that we is, saw this. That with is. Wales. That is true. It's, it's the worst not, part it's of not as game. effective. And yet, Danny Kerr is even worse mm. than than than, than ah. the Welsh scrum is at box kick. Like he's really bad at it. Yeah. That's what's forced him out of the England shirt. Is that he just has a terrible boot. Like it. it mm. Not only is it not effective. It's actually calamitous um, I yeah I still don't know like I, like, I think they I think it will stand them again in, in poor stead I think that fact will help you run the ball stead. you got bigger no, you got the likes of bigger well we'll talk about the tens in a moment bigger will be there like I, I don't I don't hate leading on others to kick no I don't I certainly don't necessarily count it against a scrummy especially when he's a utility scrummy yeah. coming in and, and no indeed the, I really hate, energy hate to see it he definitely as a guy um, off the bench we've seen Danny Kerr mm. kind of light it up we've seen it for England in years gone by like yeah. he's, he's definitely dynamic that was that being said so is Thomas Williams um, yeah it's a toss up I think the two that are probably and Kerr's kicking game has improved so as it well. has I improved it's, 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 so I mean, I, I don't know. I think maybe care, but it'll it, yeah, care or Thomas Williams. That's my thought. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I maybe care. I maybe just care. I, the more I think about it, the more I like it. If you're going to go with Garrett Davis and Murray as your main two, and then I think 
Kerr is an interesting one because he might break into the break into the top team, and then Thomas Williams is kind of first reserve. That's my thought. Okay, yeah, that's and your Ben Spencer is ben obviously Spencer's very unlucky to, to miss out there. there, but uh, he's kind of a Connor Murray type. I'd almost bring him instead of Murray if nothing else. Hmm. It's like you maybe bring him if Murray was the one to get injured. He maybe yeah, first maybe reserve then straight in as yeah. a style like for like again. There are a lot of good players here that you can that are, are leaving out. I do agree with you on Ali Price. I know there's probably some Scots going absolutely nuts, but I just. He's up and down. He's too up and down. Yeah. It's like he can be brilliant in, in a brief patch, but he can also give away a penalty at the death and lose a game for you. So it's yeah. like, yeah, no, I, I, I'd i agree that he's a bit too hot and cold. To yeah, and sometimes he just slows right down as that's well. That's, and Murray does that as well, and that's a problem. Yeah, that will be a Murray problem. As well. Yeah, like a, it, I, the, the Irishman in me would worry about Murray currently in terms yeah. of if if that's if he's going to be the starter, if... if all roads lead through him. Sure, we've seen it with Munster, watching that Munster performance against Leinster at the, in the, mm. the final where it's like, oh, they have Carberry at 10. That's exciting. Except he's not going to see the ball at all because mm. they're going to kick it in the air off nine, off Murray, of course. Yeah. And that and would even be a problem. Even when they're trying to move the ball, it's all off Yeah, nine. so you could be you could be seeing yeah. a Lions team that it's like, ooh, Murray, Murray, Finn, Russell, what an exciting partnership. Oh, wait, Finn's not seeing any of the ball because we're kicking it in the air. Yeah. And that would be a problem. Yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely, do, I definitely share your your fear. I mean, if mm. I was personally deciding, is there scope for leaving Murray out? Yes. Yeah. There definitely is. Yeah. You just pick all running scrum halves and decide you're going to be. A, all or even like you could wall. throw Bolter Ben Spencer in there as your kicking scrum half, and then go Garrett Davis, Danny Kerr, or, or something mad like that. Yeah. They'll just never do that. They won't. No, yeah. they won't. I Gatlin don't. likes the guys he trusts as he well. He does. And Murray has that acumen in, in yeah. terms of uh, that'll probably stand. I also Murray think and Murray's form is improving. His it has improved in for, against Leinster. Was the best he's had in a few yeah. in a while. It's true. It's yeah. true. Um, and the ceiling is very high. That is also true. Yeah. That is also true. But I have that worry. I do have that pet worry, and it's based only on these last few years. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I suppose with that, I like with that kind of open-ended conversation. Leave, leave drop in the comments who you think should go or has to go or who are we omitting. Um, of but, course, but, yeah. But, uh, try not to take our heads off. It's just <laughs> our opinion, <laughs> um, indeed. But we will shift outwards to the out halves, uh, which we suspect will also be three in number. Um, I think they have to be, yeah. especially when you look at the age profile of some of these guys, like playing on the whatever it is, the July, July third, and then July seventh, and then July tenth. No, you need yeah. you need to rotate in there. You do. And you need to, you to rest some guys. Ah, Stewie can um, slot in. Yeah, nah, I don't. Stewie plays scrum half. <laughs> we bring two I, scrum halves and Stewie yeah, plays I, scrum I just half. yeah, it gets very cute when you're doing that stuff I, yeah. I just like the they do a bit of that in the Lions though, I know and, and there's value in those guys but I just don't really see a clear cut you know guy who doesn't play 10 slotting in at 10 and if Stewie's your closest like the guy's not a 10 That's true. Not, he doesn't really play like a Damian McKenzie style fullback either he's, yeah. he's much more effective coming from deep on his long spirals and seeing the whole field yeah it's true um, he's in an out and out fullback at the yeah. moment he's playing well there so uh, yeah from, from the 10 nominees I suppose well you had the starting ones for the tournament were your Dan Biggers Johnny Sexton Finn Russell George Ford mm-hmm. um, but then well and then you have Callum Sheedy Billy Burns Stewie Hogg as we were saying uh, Owen Farrell uh, then being, and even behind Joe Simmons and Marcus Smith potential there's a bolters. buzz about Marcus Smith there this is, week there's yeah a, there's, there's a, a rumour there's mill a, yeah. afoot that the young kid as a bolter could be getting in there he's been great he with been, Danny Kerr they've been running the ball he has ball. been brilliant with yeah. Lindsay I know for sure um, then behind you have Jakob van der Voelt and Adam Hastings and Scotland you have Ross Byrne Joey Carberry as outside punts <laughs> from no Ireland chance. All of them, no are, all of them are unlikely. Yeah. I think the one, the one that we we've said has to go is Finn Russell, um, because yeah, but, of the passing acumen. But yeah. it wouldn't surprise me to see <laughs> Gatlin just ignoring yeah. all of that because well, we're not the only ones saying it. Everyone's saying that Finn Russell has to go, and there's good reason for it. You need someone with that passing acumen to try and get around. Yeah, and you them. just need a balance. Yeah. Like I just I prefer I, Sexton, Bigger, and Farrell are the other three front runners at the moment, mm-hmm. and they're all extremely similar players. They are. Um, so if so you bring all three of them and leave Finn at home, it's a mistake. It it mm-hmm. just it doesn't allow you to change the game. And I also think like um, good um, good passing and good um, attacking, kicking, short kicking, shallow kicks, mm-hmm. little flat cross field kicks or little chips over the center. Yeah. That's kind of how you overload that South African defensive system where Am and Co are coming right out and trying yeah. to shut down screens. Were, yeah. And if it's all screen heavy you would fear for it because Am is a really good reader of the game and will just get on top of the of the outside man and really mm-hmm. shut down the outside before sure, it happens. You saw it. You saw it. Um, if you just rewatch that that World Cup final again, you see yeah. the English pullback, pullback, 
back smothered pull back yeah. pull back we're now 40 metres back from where we started two phases later and kicking it in the air yeah and um, if you look at like Severis's break that led to the Kiwi tried to get outside that suffocating defence after 20 minutes of the All Blacks being suffocated it was a very Finn Russell-esque little flat cross kick mm-hmm. to get outside of that and I just think Finn Russell's um, offensive tool book is, is good enough to overload a very very impressive Springboks D and like if there is go, there is potential that even this great Lions pack gets a bit suffocated by the Springboks because at their best that's what they do yeah. they get in your faces and they swallow you up and they come out of the line and then just as you try and get outside those bulky forwards the Peter Steffs and the like Am is in the channel waiting for you and yeah. Finn Russell is one of those rare talents that can open up that can assess that picture in a moment and, and find an option to open it up yeah. now there is scope as well for, for Russell to get you know, bamboozled by that to try something that's not quite on and to maybe give the ball ball away or give yeah. the game away. There's always that risk, but I do think that that X factor is needed. So then you're um, talking one of uh, bigger, what, bigger Ford, Farrell, Sexton, Sheedy with Finn. Marcus Smith. Marcus Smith. All Marcus reason. Smith is ahead of Sheedy now. Sheedy's been injured. Sheedy has been injured, Nations yeah, but he, he, was, he was a brilliant one. I think Dan Bigger should go but I don't know if they like this Bigger's, Bigger's a dead cert for me yeah. like on all kinds of things the aerial game mm. like slotting in at fullback and just like it, it. Hogg is great but if Hogg's feeling a little off in the backfield just Bigger that, just that, covers that Bigger's space. just covering that so yeah. well his, his Gary Owen game you talk about a, a rush defence and countering that Bigger has that tool book he's in the best form of the three fly halves his passing is incredible his form for Northampton is brilliant he's a wonderful reader of the game Bigger is straight in there for me. Mm. Probable starting 10 for me. Bigger all day. Mm. And then the, the third, you know, Sexton has been injured. He was one of the form fly halves in, um, yeah. in the Six Nations, if not the form fly half, top point scorer. Really clutch, really smart. Mm. Assesses the back line really well. Knows how to unpick a defence himself. Knows how to play call. Reads the game really, really well. And we know as Leinster fans just how much we suffer without him. There's a yeah. lot of talk about Ross Byrne, but... His capacity to change things when things are going wrong is very, very valuable. It is true. Um, yeah. And he's delivered for Gatlin before. And, yeah. and when he's had the shootouts with Owen Farrell in 2013 and 2017, Sexton's the guy who's got the 10 shirt. Yeah. Um, Faz also plays centre. And that, that's help, that helps. helps as well. Yeah. And Sexton's injury profile is worse than Farrell's. Indeed. So for me, that's a really tough call between the two of them and I can see it go either yeah. way. What about George Ford? The greatest 10 to ever play the game. Yeah, well, the, I know there's a couple of people out on that uh, train. I don't quite buy it. No, I mean, I I, it's like Squidge's little pet, Squidge Rugby's little pet theory is that, that George Ford is the best out half in the game. And uh, yeah, I, kind of, like he, I, I definitely get what he's seeing. I watched his video and there's merit to the thought of like he's a very good reader of defences. I just kind of reject the idea that he's the only 10 who reads defences. I've seen Sexton and Farrell do very similar things. I've seen Farrell in a Saracen setup be, uh, run one of the most sophisticated and option heavy offences just to perfection. Yeah. I don't quite. Like, Ford's got a lovely passing game. He was awesome against Ulster. He just unpicked them so beautifully. I don't think he's too far away, but personally, attributally, like, it just goes wrong from one to one, especially with his kicking game, it just yeah. goes wrong from, like, they go off the side of the boot, and it's all well and good being a good reader of the game, but at times under pressure, he kind of melts, and the Springboks will give him no time. Indeed. And that, that yeah. I, I kind of just don't think, attributely, he's yeah, got Yeah, well, we saw it in the World yeah. Cup final, it went completely wrong for him, and then we've yeah. seen it a few times before, and as you say, attributely, like, one of the things that'll stand sexed, and instead, the injury profile won't, and the recent concussion won't, that could see him miss out based on that. But one of the things about him and Bigger and Farrell is that when they're in the 10 shirt, they offer that physicality that's almost like a 12, which mm. is what the Safas will be bringing through Andre Pollard, who just took the, pit, the field recently and is back from injury. Like That physicality at 10, a guy who will make tackles. George Ford is barely a, st- a speed bump off. Well, he, he does um, make his tackles, but he tends to soak a bit. And yeah. so does Sexton, to be fair. Like, oh, that, yeah. that is an issue. Like Sexton's very, you know, he tries to hold people up, which he is does. just disaster central against the Springboks. Mm. you got to get low, and Sexton won't do that. And then sometimes he'll get concussions because of it. I think defence is as big an issue for Sexton as it is for Ford. Mm. but I just think I think Sexton's a little better than Ford I actually think Sexton's reading of the game is, is as good if not better than Ford's he's a very good reader of the game it's an underrated, um, underrated attribute, of, attribute his. of his yeah. but uh, for me it's the Sophie's choice between those two and yes there's this talk about Marcus Smith and mm. uh, if Smith goes they'll, they'll choose him as the bolter over 
uh, Finn Russell, which for me is is crazy. Like, yeah. He's a young kid; he needs to play test rugby first. Although, like, it is an interesting one, but Finn is, I think, a level above yeah. right now. Indeed, yeah. yeah. No, I would, I would argue too that, that too. But then there's maybe you never know. Maybe they just maybe yeah. Gatlin just doesn't like the cut of his jib, and that'll be enough. It is enough. If, but, like, that's it. It is enough. If that's the crack, if coach doesn't like you, you're out. Yeah, it's indeed. Gregor Townsend is in there though, and he's been waxing lyrical about yeah, Finn. Indeed. It could like I think Gregor Townsend. It's in his interests to have Finn go because if Finn doesn't go um, there's all of all of a sudden that rift is going to be right back there in the Scottish camp between the, all the, the the patch that's been put in there will be peeled right off yeah. and they'll be at each other's throats again with a World Cup to prepare for so that's I, true. I, I that's don't true. think that Gregor will fancy not having Finn there, I think he'll fight very hard for Finn Russell. Yeah. which is why I think he'll go. I think he should go. I think so. Him, yeah. him bigger, and a, and one other, um, Farrell or Sexton. Farrell or Sexton, unless you're bringing Farrell as a twelve, come ten. Yeah, I um, don't think you can really skirt away and pick all four of them, can you? Maybe, maybe I guess. If you if, if you're, you're shy on twelves, especially minus so three, George three, Moore, three centers plus Farrell, please. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? But I, I'd like—I just don't see it bringing all four of them. It would feel like a cop out. <laughs> it would. It would. You're going to have to make that Sophie's choice. <laughs> yeah. right? But maybe not. It's strange. Yeah, things yeah. have happened. It's true. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's kind of the conversation on ten. Who would you bring, and who would you yeah, start? I, I'm, I'm not um, sure. I personally like. I, I, you know what? I think it's really tough. I think you can make a good case for both. I think Farrell is very good as well. I think Farrell at his best is sublime. Yeah. Um, quality, quality again passing. it's a stylistic thing how do you want to play but you know how what you, Sexton you want... has won the battle between Faz and Sexton well you know it's harsh to say because Faz moved to 12 and the last line's done yeah. fact, Sexton's been brilliant for Gatland one yeah, and he's he's just kind of the injury might count against him and the age profile yeah you might you, might, you, and injury yeah, you might just go with Farrell and I, it kills me to say because Sexton's brilliant and but, he's been, he was yeah, better yeah. than Farrell in the Six Nations as yeah, well yeah. Thing, so but if you're being brutally honest about ways to beat the Springboks Farrell might be your guy as well especially when you can play 12 and throw those long passes and you're dealing with that defence yeah true yeah, all true you yeah. might go with Farrell but Jules it's tough yeah, it oh. kills me to say um, ok with that we will park that controversial one and we will move on to the centres the midfield um, and jeez there, like, we reckon four will go um, from this it could, it could be that there are only three but they're we're kind of scrimping on centres to bring other people Ec- elsewhere extra back row uh, or, yeah, something. or something yeah, or something or having guys double jobbing for, yeah. for like you know Farrell being, being one example but uh, but just in terms of the short list of candidates from Wales you obviously have Jonathan Davies uh, you had George North but he went off in the Rainbow Cup and is now injured he was a nail, nailed on test starter for me but he's now out of the picture yeah, so Jay Davis yeah. Nick Tonkins Owen Watkin Johnny Williams and Willis Halaholo there was a lot of kind of centre by committee they were they were kind of trying to work out what their combination was before finding the uh, Davies North one by the end then in uh, Irish camp you have Robbie Henshaw Gary Ringrose and Bundy Aki maybe Chris Farrell on the periphery those are the four yeah. who have been Ireland's guys anyway um, Scotland had a rake load as well yeah indeed James Lang Chris Harris Sam Johnson Hugh Jones and Cameron Redpath who was just back from injury and was definitely the most impressive of all of those guys even though I know Sean, Sean in the Calcutta Cup has looked good mm. for Bath like a yeah. Bath, you know, he wasn't the problem with Bath against no, Montpellier he's no, looked he good wasn't. for them yeah um, um, this is true uh, and then from England obviously we have Owen Farrell again depends whether you pick him as a 10 or you pick him here Henry Slade Elliot Daly Ollie Lawrence and Manu Tuolagi the, yeah. the Manu the Manu shout out he's due back next month is he or this month actually that the court to Alex yeah. you do, like if he's if he's in any way fit you'd, you'd want to bring him because he's yeah. that special of, of, take, a, of a player I, personally I mean this is kind of burying the end of the conversation but yeah I'd take a punt on Manu <laughs> just looking at these options as well I actually think they're quite thin at centre to yeah, be honest indeed. in terms of like well I think from yeah. Ireland you're bringing Robbie Henshaw yeah. and you're can not you make bringing a combination out of those that's a match for Dell Indian Am really in terms of quality at their best I don't think you can Red Path Henshaw yeah Red Path is very green Red Path is all potential Henshaw has been great and his form has been excellent I think he goes I think mm-hmm. it would, him and North was was going to be the partnership mm-hmm. and now you're looking at like yeah I don't it's not really elite centre time I tell you the bookies have um the, the bookies have Henshaw, Davies, mm. Ringrose and Slade. Yeah, see, that's crazy to yeah. me. Yeah, Ringrose has been awful this year. And uh, there's no disrespect, I do love Gary Ringrose and he's been great for a long time. But this year he has really struggled. He's really struggled in the open field. Mm. Like he's, he's doing, he's listing to the right and often grubber kicking. Like whenever he has to straighten and give, like with just what you watch the Kiwi Super Rugby teams do so cleanly when it's like a, th- a sort of a three on two, but there's open field and the defense can cover. Like the Kiwi guys just know, straighten the ball, be really quick, 
uh, 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 get a defender to bite in and then give the ball yeah. Gary Ringer's awful at that like he yeah. really struggles with it he just kind of lifts this to the right lifts to the right eats up the space drops and then either throws the a switch or drops it on the toe or gets, gets intercepted mushed. yeah he's been yeah. like all over the place yeah. and I just yeah and then defensively he's got, he's obviously got that bad habit of slip and tackle sometimes and I just don't see him as a line. No, I, th- I think um, I think Jonathan Davies will likely go. Um, Jonathan Davies is definitely trust. had a ring rose. Yeah, um, I think I think it's him, Henshaw, and Slade probably. Slade probably, yeah. Because and, yeah. and to be honest, Henshaw Slade has potential as a as a combination in terms. And then of Red Path is your bolter, is it? Or Harris is a bolter. Uh, I see. This is it. Harris. There's a lot of talk about, and he did have a decent Six Nations. But for me, no one put in as good a performance in the centre in for Scotland as Redpath on week one, mm. and that was that was total uh, like a really really good showing against England in, in the in the Calcutta Cup. Yeah. And and to be honest, Harris hasn't shown anything like that. If you're taking Harris a punt on Manu, he's been and he, he cuts good, good line as well. Like he does. But I I would worry to be honest against that. You know, Tanya Am, I think would just gobble him up. I think on, Am, on, on on defense. Yeah. That's. That's definitely fair. Yeah, I, I get I what you're saying. you would saying. eat him up and spit him back out, so I do. I, I fear Latanyo yeah. Am. I really do. No, I know. I, I get, get what him. you're saying. And Delindy as well. Yeah. Um, you do need physicality in there. Like, yeah, I think I think Henshaw Slade as a starting combo makes a lot of sense with Davies, depending on form, slotting in for either of them. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, uh, Harris is your... Bo- uh, so, sorry, yeah, Redpath is your bolter. Definitely makes yeah, a lot of unless sense. Unless you pay, um, take the punt on Manu. Which is the yeah, yeah, that's it. Actually, I did say at the top of this, I could take the punt on Manu. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Who do you leave behind then if you're taking the punt on Manu? Probably Red Path. Red just path. on on the, again. It's the same thing as the Kieran Hardy thing. He just he didn't so have you the run of games. Select Manu on paper and tell Red Path if this guy isn't looking Fit. right. You're, you're gonna, in. You're in. We're yeah. gonna cut him and you're in. If this guy doesn't look right, that's you're probably in. what I would do. Now yeah. that being said, I, like it could be something else entirely. It could be that shortlist. So, like it could be. It could be that Harris goes or Sam Johnson goes as well. Like these guys Sam did Johnson, play pretty no well. Way. Yeah. I know, yeah, no, indeed. And yeah, who else do we got? Ollie Lawrence, no. No way. Um, Halaholo had a decent, in the brief showings that he had, looked pretty good. Yeah, um, sure, yeah. I definitely think he could deliver. In terms of the out-there yeah. punts that, that yeah. could happen in the catch. He was, was an out-there punt when he came in for Wales. Like yeah. People were like, I can't remember who they were asking for. Jamie Roberts, that was it. He was playing well for Dragons. People were like, oh, get Jamie Roberts in there. you know, Because mm-hmm. they had an injury crisis at centre. And then Halaholo comes in, and after like two minutes, all that qu- talk was gone. Indeed. Because he was everywhere. Yeah. And he is classy so there's, there's potential yeah. for him to go in as a bolter as well um, yeah the, the question mark is about Manu Tulagi because he is by far the best of all of those guys and I know Robbie yeah. Henshaw has a brilliant season and is up for, for player of the uh, the tournament or was it was nominated for European player of the year as well but like all of that is without Tuolagi there and yeah. when Tuolagi is there he's just a different kind of specimen in that midfield and then one that you might need oh, yeah. Fit, uh, Fit Tuolagi is one of the first names on the Lions team sheets especially just looking at the profile of the centres it's like yeah. it's, it's not it's not as good as in other positions, I don't think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. if I was picking a World 15, I don't know if I'd have any Lions in there. You certainly, like, your Gail Fikus and your Hunter Paisamis, yeah. even David Avili at the moment, are all impressing a little more than the than the Northern Hemisphere guys, in my view. Mm. Um, I think, yeah, it's an issue. It's a problem position, potentially. Although Henshaw's form has Henshaw's been great. Been I don't want to diss him. He will be right. defensive yeah. leader in there from yeah. either 12 or 13, depending on what they want to do. Do they want to have Faz? Do they want to have Slade? I think having him defend at 12 makes a lot of sense, because even though he's leading the line from 12... Um, you know, the, the Springboks the spring the play pretty yeah, well. They so, play a lot through Delindy, and, yeah. and having Henshaw sit him down would just change up things. Yeah, up. And, and he has experience of doing that yeah, with yeah. the Leinster Munster showings that we've had of, of, of late. So, yeah, no, I think he's probably going to be uh, starting uh, either 12 or 13, and then it depends what you want to do with the other jersey. You could go Slade at 13 outside him, you could shift him outside and put Faz at 12. All of these are, are options there. You could have see Halaholo come in and be brilliant. You could see Jay Davies come back and light it up from 12 as well. Yeah, it's possible. All of these are potential ones. The only one I'm certain is going is pro is well the two are probably Robbie Henshaw and and uh, Jay Davies outside of that. <laughs> You're just thinking there's plenty of Gatlin precedent for selecting Davies even against the uh, even against the current. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, well, absolutely, certainly, absolutely, like, to be yeah. honest, even the last Lions tour, I thought like Henshaw ultimately got injured before the second test, which was a shame. But he was lighting it up in the midweek one. I couldn't understand why he wasn't getting a look in. He was actually defending better than he is even now in that uh, in that 2017 tour. He was just awesome in his yeah. in the open but he will go. He, he, he'll um, have a fair crack at the test shirt this time around I'd say yeah. uh, along with um, uh, Jay Davis and then Slade is another one Slade's quality yeah, he's got he that is. kicking game passing That's game it, the, the left and he's peg physical as well he kinda, yeah. What, yeah all of that a lovely footballer um, yeah. yeah so there's there's definitely options the man who's is the 
the, uh, the, the, the headache. Do you want to take that punt? Part of you definitely does. Is there scope um, for going Red Path over Slade? Yeah. Taken then there is. Well, like there How is. How much do you trust him? I don't know. This is yeah. like he hasn't been as exposed as Slade to international footy, which is yeah. which is is what we'll probably see. Like I don't think Red Path is going. I, okay. I'm just speculating that he he might deserve to because he's been one of the more impressive guys in that centre. And as you say. I haven't been blown away by what we're seeing in the, in the midfield in most of these. No, m- uh, from I think Chris league. Harris is probably unlucky to miss out in your mind just because, like, I think his defensive acumen was probably the best of any, apart from maybe Henshaw. Henshaw's defensive acumen was great, and then Harris also uh, read defenses pretty well. But then Scotland did leak a lot of points. So yeah, they did. It's mm. probably harsh to, to 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 you can't really say it's been perfect as well. So yeah, I think that I think that makes sense. Um, as a four slash five, depending on the Tuolangi situation. Yeah. Um, and then we reach at last the summit of this uh, conversation. The uh, the outside backs, the last uh, piece of the puzzle. Um, yeah. We we're reckon six, probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, um, there's loads of options. Obviously, this is just always a stacked conversation. You're looking at informed finishers. Um, so from Wales you've got Louis Rees Samet you've got Liam Williams you've got Josh Adams that's the starting uh, threesome mm-hmm. Hallam Amos also featured in Six Nations Lee Halfpenny you know he's been player of the series once before and he's available yeah. uh, potential bolter at fullback from Ireland's point of view I don't think they've been as impressive but uh, Hugo Keenan has had a, a good debut season at fullback mm-hmm. um, is, is, is a quality player himself um, Keith Earls uh, obviously you know, form has been. You know, it, it hadn't been great, but then he he pulled off one of the great um, performances he's ever played in an Irish shirt against England and showed say, some, some lethal best, finishing. The the best um, performance of his career in Ireland, perhaps, probably. He, he was stellar. Um, but um, yeah, James then, Lowe, Jacob Stockdale outside of him, the left wing options, and Jordan Larmer as well, obviously um, versatile, v- versatile jobs. dancing feet. Uh, from from Scotland as well, great back three: Duhan van der Merwe, top sc- try scorer in Six Nations; Darcy Graham, Stuart Hogg, Sean Maitland, all featured. Yeah, and Graham unfortunately injured uh, yeah. at the moment, so he's not going to feature. Um, from an English point of view, obviously you've Johnny May, Elliot Daly lost his jersey and his form, yeah. and uh, yeah, a good second half against Ireland not going to be enough to get him involved. Anthony Watson has the versatility, can co- cover fullback, might be a tempting option, yeah. and Max, Max Malins as well from from Bristol, who's been um, in and out, but a, but a good player, a really good player, um, yeah. Oh, well, I think there are a few who have to go, don't there? Like Louis Rees Samet probably has to go. Yeah. In form um, finisher, I think Johnny May as well. All Johnny class. May, all class. Then Stewie the, Hogg. Yeah, two fullbacks. Stewie Hogg and Liam Williams. That's first Those and second. Yeah, I would Full, agree. Fullback, yeah, for I sure. Would 100%. Yeah. And then the one who's unlucky to miss out is probably Hugo Keenan. But, yeah. uh, but he's, but on, he's, the reserve. he's on the reserve. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but those two at fullback, yeah. And then you're talking Louis Rees Samet. Are you talking Van der Merwe as well? Two left back, left wings options, or or are you talking Johnny May over Van der Merwe? Yeah, I'm um, picking Johnny May over yeah. Duhan. I know Duhan was top try scorer. I know he's physical. I just think Johnny May is something extra. I think yeah. uh, like uh, he wasn't put in space, and every mm-hmm. like even against Italy, like the moment he gets in space, he just does something world class. Yeah, like he just wasn't put in space by England all tournament. When he's in space, he's unreal. And That's I think true. He, he's vastly improved his. Uh, game at uh, covering the kick, co- uh, covering the kicks. Yeah, um, which is somewhere where Duhan might be attacked. Although you know, Hogg does cover the backfield decently. So, so the Springboks will be looking to test them both aerially and uh, on, on on the turn. I think May has the experience. I just, yeah. I would really, really advocate for Johnny May. I'm a huge fan. I think yeah. he could easily start at eleven. Yeah, and Sam has played on the right wing as well. Let's free forget. That's he right. On both wings. That's true. He's yeah, so maybe Johnny pick, May. pick and hit. That's right. Are you sure they do that yeah. for Gloucester? So yeah, per- perhaps Reece Samet on the right. Uh, like Liam Williams definitely going Stuart Hogg definitely going I would argue uh, then Reece Samet definitely Johnny May you're saying yeah, Reece Samet's on the right that leaves, actually, that leaves two of. yeah so hang on you've got for me the starting team at the moment is Hogg at fullback um, uh, Reece Samet on one wing maybe Johnny May on the other and then you Liam Williams covering I think the guy who's pushing Johnny May most on the left is Josh Adams mm-hmm. maybe not Doohan well Doohan or Josh Adams and As one of one of those is missing out, and one of those is going. Yeah, or could you saying? miss, or could you bring both? Um, mm. Anthony Watson is the option. Anthony on the right Watson wing. on the he's right all wing. class, and he covers fullback. Larmer if you need him, I guess. But no, he's. I think I think Irish backs are going to miss out by and large. Yeah, I would think. I think so. Outside of Henshaw, really, I don't see anyone. No, who sh- like the only the like the, the, yeah. the lethal one who had a bit of form is Stockdale, but he's behind all these and he's, guys. Yeah, his form from, isn't yeah. all that either. Um, so no, yeah, I think. I think you're looking at Anthony Watson probably on the right wing. Just looking at the way they balance it. Louis Rees and Anthony Watson on the right wing. 
Hogg and Williams at fullback, and then on the left wing, May and Duhan slash Adams. Which would you prefer? Adams is an all class finisher, he just true. finds tries. It's true. And Duhan so is Duhan. super physical, found the most tries this tournament, mm-hmm. and you know is is a great runner of the ball as well. And the Safo though that you, you had that juju will count against. Yeah, him. the juju will count against him in my head anyway. In my estimation, so what? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you like if you can leave the, t- the top try scorer of the Six Nations out, but I know that you can because the caliber of the options that you just listed off. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I would probably err on the side of yeah, probably bring in Doohan just on You're leaving Josh Adams. Just out? leaving Josh Adams. Or are you leaving Johnny May out? You're allowed to do that, even though I advocated for him. I don't know if he can. Like again, Johnny May's just is a special kind of player although he didn't get to see it all that often this Six Nations jeez it's tough someone's yeah, going Josh to Adams out. is a fine player and he's been top yeah, try some, scorer in yeah, I know Six yeah, yeah. someone's you know? going to be missing out Louis Rissan is not nailed on 14 for the Lions for me and then the 11 yeah. shirts and the two full backs pick themselves yeah you can start and start the, one and rotate the other either or yeah, and, and Johnny May's played on the right wing Like, is, do you think Adam uh, uh, Anthony Watson could miss out yeah, I do mm-hmm. potentially. You can move Johnny May to the right. I don't know if he's been that Duhan stellar as well. Like, like if you're bringing one English back in a full one guy from the English back three that didn't quite shine uh, the way they would have, I think mm. Johnny May is that guy. Yeah, and yet and um, yet Watson was really great against uh, I think Wales. He yeah, had a couple of lovely it's touches. That's um, true. He's he's definitely dynamic. I think he suffers a little in a Bath jersey because they make him do so much and play fullback. And they like the ben pitches Spencer. of Quagmire as well. Yeah, but I, like he is quality in open field. But yeah, if you were going to my head, if you were asking me to choose one of, of May and, and, and Watson I think I'd choose May I think May mm. is a special kind of player yeah. but he's a left footer you know he, I know he's played right wing but he's a left footer isn't he so yeah. where is he a right footer I'm trying to remember I think I've seen him do chips and chases with his right foot yeah I've definitely seen him on either wing be dangerous or pop up on either side yeah, of the pitch yeah. and be dangerous yeah, I don't know I don't know Jeez, yeah. who am I leaving behind it's, Maybe it's just Watson, but Maybe then he does. Watson. He can cover fullback. None of the other guys can cover fullback. Well, Liam Williams goes. No, but did, that's the two of them. But then you've got Duhan, um, Duhan, Reece Samet, May, and Adams. None of them play fullback. True. But you also have bigger at ten who you can maybe slot in. Ah, maybe. but he doesn't actually play fullback. No, like. true, but. No, I think actually Watson. Now that I um, for versatility reasons, we said at the start of the show that versatility is versatility gonna matter. might matter. Yeah, um, maybe they're too. I think I might me. leave Duhan out personally. Yeah, right. I think that's so harsh. I know that's so harsh. There's but, um, there's Scots, Scots there. Are, Ty, Scots, be, get, get typing which, which, the, which the outrage Scots, comment. Which Scots have I screwed so far? So Xander Fagerson is one. <laughs> I screwed sorry, all the other, all the non Johnny Gray second row options. Jamie Ritchie screwed him over Royal. Um, Ali Price, <laughs> yeah, was a dick to him. Uh, didn't even make Finn, make, we, we, you fought Finn's corner fairly well. I fought Finn's well. corner, but then screwed over Chris Harris. Oh, yeah. You you stomped on his grave then. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we yeah. are. We are merciless, in merciless. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then I was fighting for wee red path, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. You were you were killing one Scott to to advocate for another. Why not both, Shane? Yeah, Why not both? Why can't we have Price, uh, Russell, we, Harris, and uh, and and red path as our no? <laughs> <laughs> not only is that not in the in the spirit of the Lions, it, it wouldn't work. So, yeah, um, you're probably right. Yeah, so uh, like I think yeah, one of those is missing out. You say Duhan. I say maybe maybe Watson, but Watson, you see, the versatility could save him in that regard. It is tough. I think it, it's a toss up. I think currently Stewie Hogg has the has the fifteen jersey, and the un- undroppable Louis, Louis Rees Samet will be there. And then it's there's the potential as well there. for them to select Keenan, you know, as well. But I'd there be surprised. is, but I'd be surprised. Yeah. Like he, he was brilliant for Ireland, but yeah. Ireland's. Dyna- the dynamism of the backs was was the problem for yeah, it. Like they won I, every I, single forward battle they were in, and the backs weren't able yeah. to convert. Whereas the same couldn't be said mm. for Wales. Wales almost yeah. lost most of their. Certainly, in the first half of the tournament lost all the forward battles and just were more clinical. Yeah. Yeah. And then their pack slowly got into it as as the tournament went on. Yeah. So it, like, yeah. there's a cruel assessment of Hugh, Hugo Keenan that you could do, where you could say he's just like a less powerful Rob Carney. Like at the he, moment he though, he's the younger. Note, he, yeah. he reads the field but he, he lacks that little bit of pace and he he lacks the raw power and the contact and with the boot that Carney brings yeah um, he's yeah. also green he's, yeah, he's, he's a young, little green he's a young but lad he, my point is he's covered wing as well so that there's yeah, kind of, but yeah. he doesn't really have the pace for wing so yeah it's, uh, I, maybe not him <laughs> yeah. maybe Stockdale if any Irish I think so yeah. even though he's or, been or, or Larmer maybe Earls or Larmer yeah no not really I don't think Earls is within 
any any anywhere near. And yet um, against England, he was all over it. He was world class that day. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's not going to be Earls. Um, it, like it might be Larmer just for the fact that he does occasionally play fullback. He might be thinking like, oh, he could slot in a fullback if in, it mid-week, was, if in it a was, midweek team yeah, against South Africa Invitational. If it was two um, years ago, I think Larmer would get in as the young bolter, but mm. it's not, and he hasn't kicked on quite yeah. enough. So, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. That's um, why, and I think it's it's going to be one of those. Like rather than this segue, I think it'll be one of those ones we were listing earlier on who will miss out. Um, but uh, geez, it's a high quality, high quality problems to be having, and uh, yeah, it's good. You can definitely make a very dynamic team out of all yeah. of those options. I'm, I'm sure we selected a squad somewhere in there with a couple of uh, options. I, I don't know if we were getting adventurous, we might try and animate it and put it on the screen for you. Um, because yeah, that that's kind of our squad. Those are our options that we've gone through. You know, it's real tough selecting 36, and I think every fan who's tried to select 36 has come up with a different option. There's a lot of similar level players. There's some who we all agree on, and there's some who none of us agree on. Uh, and and that's then there might the be one or two who we all agree on who Gatlin disagrees <laughs> on, and then we'll that, that that'll maybe be the one or two. Line, you yeah, know? maybe one or two. Yeah. There'll definitely be a storyline. Yeah. Um, but listen, if you want to follow us, uh, follow, uh, catch us what uh, following all of this live, the drama on Thursday morning. We're gonna be up. We're gonna be uh, live gonna be on YouTube at half eleven or so. Half uh, eleven. Ballpark that's figure. British and, then, and Irish time, and yeah, then uh, we will half be twelve. Fully expecting. Gatlin to be there immediately and then not wholly surprised when he's there an hour into the stream oh, can you imagine um, I, like I definitely it's going to be cruel now if they just delay the announcement of the squad and we're there yeah, well, you have to listen to Bill Beaumont have a chat first or a little world <laughs> rugby kind of piece get, get them all out Jay. Yeah. all the captains have yeah, their say yeah. all the living captains a few then, montages yeah a seance for some of the dead captains yeah, <laughs> yeah all yeah. of that um, <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it could be a long old affair hopefully it's just straight out I think we'll know the captain soon enough and yeah. then you know worst case scenario we can riff on that for an hour yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Alan Wynne Jones um, oh yeah I thought it would be Alan Wynne Jones <laughs> any questions <laughs> pretty yeah. much so, yeah, uh, so that and more live on Thursday so yeah do do keep an eye out for that feel free to drop in drop us a comment we will answer your chat yeah and when then we'll have a chat afterwards as well yeah. once the squad's named about what we think about each decision and who was unlucky to miss out and why we think he might have gone for X or Y option yeah indeed because there's definitely there's scope for guys who you objectively would think are, are better but you might have a combination in mind or certainly from the well we were citing it a little in our going through the guys who've delivered for him four years ago Gatlin's definitely going to have good stock in them that's where you're talking Sexton's Farrell's yeah. Murray's all of these guys Mako's uh, yeah. all of these guys who have been there before that will stand them in good stead in terms of just coaches the devil yeah. you know kind of argument when and they're I, looking at all these options I think we'll um, have an early insight as well into what stylistically is going to be Gatlin's thinking yeah, based on uh, the, pe- the based on the picks he gets so it'll be definitely be revealing and there'll definitely be intrigue there and it's important to remember as we react uh, to the decisions that are made even in disagreement um, that there is no guy of anyone that we've listed who's going to be truly unworthy I mean this is all the cream of the crop from these four nations yeah. and even a guy who we were saying I don't know like Ali Price or someone like that who we were like I don't know like they have the capacity to be brilliant and they're like if they get the Lions cap it's important to just remember that that they're all really really quality players yeah. with the potential to shine on the big stage That's absolutely exactly right yeah. exactly right so yeah I suppose with that we will park this marath- marathon conversation and we will pick it up live on Thursday if you want to join us for that please do Absolutely. Thank you for watching the Overlap Rugby podcast. If you enjoyed that video, please be sure to like and uh, share with your friends. And if you'd like to hear more of what we have to say, please be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you get notified when we upload our videos. And uh, please join the comment section as well. We like to get a fun conversation going here.